Hi everybody, welcome back to Beer Betty's. I'm Whitney. And I'm Senya. And tonight we have a special guest. This is my friend Daniel. He is from Quetaro, Mexico? Querétaro. Querétaro. Sorry, I'm a white girl in brown skin. Can't <laughs> help it. Anyways, so um, Daniel brought in a special beer for us. Mm -hmm. That is the, what is it? It's called Nochebuena, uh, which means poinsettia flower. And it's a seasonal beer from Mexico. And actually it's the only seasonal beer we, we have over there. So it's kind of interesting. Really, who makes it? Uh, it's from the same brewery that makes uh, Dos Equis. It's called Cuauhtémoc Moctezuma, uh, which is uh, one of the two big breweries that produces beer in Mexico. We only have like the two main ones, and this is from one of them. And uh, would you say that Noche Buena is going to be a popular beer in Mexico, or is it just kind of, I mean, is it popular or is it not? Well, definitely, I would say it's it's very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes on the winter season, mm -hmm. um, by the end, by the month of October to December. So yes, every year, a lot of people is waiting until it is released and in order to go to the store and buy it. So I'm curious, um, you know, because Christmas is such a popular holiday, especially down in Mexico. Um, why do you think that this is the only seasonal beer do you, that you guys have available? Do you think it's something that'll maybe grow in the future, or is it just something that people don't usually think about? Or uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't know why in Mexico there hasn't been like the boom of the seasonal or handcrafted beers. Mm -hmm. Like I will say that there's a um, bipolio or. The market is owned only by these two main companies, which oh. produce beer. So basically, because so, uh, they kind of okay, have a monopoly so over the market. It would yes. be because, okay. like, I guess the, the the craft beer we take for granted, you know, being here in the U.S. Yeah. and you know various other parts of the world, um, we have microbreweries, craft beers, what have you, all over. But I, I would think in a place like Mexico or you know other countries that specialize in a certain type of liquor then the beer just doesn't get as much attention. Or it's you know, like and we, we, we ran into that when I was you know doing research in, on Italy. Mm -hmm. They are all about wines, so their beers just kind of got shoved to the side. Well, and I guess Texas is kind of having that issue right now too with, you know, Texas laws favor a lot of Texas wine, and it's not true. the brewers a lot of problems. Not true. I mean, it does cause some problems, but it has not hurt the industry as much as, like, say, a country, when you have it, it to a federal level. But there are a few breweries, though, that are actually suing the TABC, saying that, that a hmm. lot of their laws are keeping them from being able to sell their beer. So, fight the system, guys. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, on to the So, beer, on to the beer. So, um, what do you know about it? Is it... What kind of a beer is it? Well, it's a German style uh, Bock beer. It is full bodied, dark kind. And yeah, I would say it, it is a good beer. It's uh, one of my favorites. Whenever it's released, I go to the store and buy a, a case of them. So let's try it to, to see what you yeah, think. I'm excited to try it. All mm -hmm. right. Usually a lot of the beers that you see in America that come from Mexico are usually more of the lighter lager style. So this is really interesting and we don't get many Bach beers that are from Mexico. So like I'm really like. excited. That's true. All right. Daniel, I will let you do the honors. Sure. <laughs> Pour. Absolutely. All right. I mean, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give them a little bit more. Yeah, there you oh, go. fantastic. What a good host. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'll try not to be stingy with this Yeah, beer. I was trying to keep the rest for me, but nah, <laughs> let's be more generous. All right, girls. Let's see what do we got here. Nope. Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Got to pour a little more. Mm. You have to get just as drunk as we are. <laughs> All right, I see. And I know you taught us a really cool toast beforehand, so I want to. Oh yeah, what was that toast? About the toast again. Oh yeah, well, I will leave that for the last drink because I don't want to finish it. But let's see first. How's how's the color? What do you see, girls? In here? Definitely a nice, Definitely beautiful a nice amber, dark, dark caramel <laughs> color. 
Yeah, kind of. Uh, oh, not much so head. Dark gold. Yeah, not much head. Um, but I oh notice a little bit, almost like an orange red in there too, like a it kind is, of amberish. And it's yeah. Very clear. There's no cloudiness to it yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, no cloudiness at all. Ooh, off the nose, I get um. It smells almost like an IPA. I think. Yeah, I think that may be just because um. How far it probably has to travel, but let's see. But you do get a nice hoppy smell mm -hmm. to it. A lot of carbonation. Very crisp. Mm-hmm. A lot of very crisp. Very crisp. I like this. It's very friendly for a Bach style of beer. I mean, usually with a Bach, you expect something that's gonna, the malt's gonna punch you a little bit more in the tongue, but this one is very There's crisp. no punching. <laughs> There's definitely and no like, punching. It goes down very smooth. Yeah, and you could even put a lime next to this and it would still taste good. So it kind of reminds me Oh, please me don't of, put a lime. Well, I'm not going to put a lime, but I'm <laughs> saying, like, if you wanted to, it wouldn't, it wouldn't clash completely like a lot of American Bachs or German Bachs would. You can definitely, I hate to say this, because I don't want to, you know, stereotype it or anything, but you can definitely eat this with a very traditional Mexican meal because it, it, it won't that. interfere with any of these spices. As a matter of fact, it'll probably complement it because they're very crisp. So it'll probably bring out a lot of the chili flavors. I think and I can speak for everybody in Texas and Mexico that there's nothing wrong with a good Mexican meal. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, Tex-Mex, Mexican, whatever. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very good. Different ki things, Tex-Mex and Mexican. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. All right, well, I think it's a very easy, drinkable beer for mm -hmm. the kind of uh, darkness it has, yeah. but it is very smooth. Yeah. Well, why is it your favorite? one of your favorites, Daniel? Uh, I like Bohemia mm -hmm. and uh, also Modelos, like the, like the Negra Modelo one. and Modelo Especial. Those are my favorites, mm -hmm. but this is really one of my favorites, too. Cool. All right. cool. Another dark beer fan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the dark fold. Well, the fact that I actually like it, that's, that says something. I know. Because I'm not a big dark beer fan. That's true. That's very true. I don't really like dark. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I live so, on the dark side. What can I say? <laughs> what would you uh, What would you rate this? Well, I mean, you know, it's definitely an easy drinking beer. So I think I'll give it about like a three out of a six pack because um, wow, it's easy drinking and I enjoy it, but at the same time. I'm very ADD and I like a complex flavor, so I know yeah, after a while I'm gonna, gonna be, be like, oh, what else is there? This is <laughs> actually gonna be a very, uh, it's gonna be a very uh, simple, it's kind of a beginner beer if you're trying to get, you're trying to go from Definitely. lagers to darks, this is gonna be a perfect intro beer for it. Well, and one thing I really enjoy about this actually is the fact that you can tell that it is a Mexican style buck because a lot of Mexican beers are very easy drinking, laid back, you can tell that they are in a very hot climate you know, where they don't want a lot of thick, malty flavors. So even with their box, it's gonna have that nice, like hot weather, easy drinking mentality. So, it, you know, you could drink a box on the mm -hmm. beach and not be sitting there feeling like you're full and bloated. It's great. Okay, you know what, honestly, uh, this actually just reminded me of something. Sorry, gonna have to throw a little hey, go for thing it. out here. Uh, so this is, a, this is our first Christmas beer of the season. We are looking for some Christmas stories. Mm-hmm. We read something when we were doing one of our old reviews and about how a certain beer that we will not name um, made other family members a little more interesting. So we want to hear your stories of how other family members have made things a little more interesting because we are trying, we think that maybe for our Christmas episode, we're going to reenact some of those stories. So if you have any good stories, so please email us. So pretty much what she's saying is if you have any stories about you and or your family members getting wasted and making an idiot out of yourself, please let us know so we can reenact them. <laughs> All right. Anyways, Daniel, back to your, what is your rating? Uh, I would say four out of six because, you know, I'm used to these kind of beers. Um, mm -hmm. This reminds me of the holidays and yeah, I really like it. All right, I'm gonna get it a f give it a five out of a six. Nice. Wow. Because oh. I really, really enjoy the light <laughs> flavor. So, you know Your me. Your Mexican side is coming out. I'm a lager girl. <laughs> I'm a Hefeweizen wheat girl, so definitely. But anyways, well, well thank nice. you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You. Thank you and very much. And until next time. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Oh, wait, no, now we'll we'll say, special toast. Oh, yeah. Okay, in Mexico, we say fondo. Fondo and you drink it all. Till the end. Salud. Salud. Thank you. <laughs>